Can you put her in a taxi and tell them I'll pay this end? Thank you. Just call from the school, so Justine will be here. You could at least ring me. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hello. Hello. If you just care to step into the interview room, I need to take some details. Yeah. Come on, Justine. I called the place she worked and they told me she left at around 11. When she has to work late, I look after Justine and she sleeps over at my place. It's just not like her. She always calls in if she's going to be late. I have to be at work by nine. Has she ever done this before? Not called? Never. It's not like her at all. I mean, she hasn't even phoned me at work, you know, to tell me where she is. And your daughter works at? Like I said, a bar three days a week and four nights at... It's a massage place just off the King's Road. She's a qualified monsieur. Got her certificates as a beautician. She sometimes does private clients at home, like facials, hair and nail extensions and... This is just not like her. I don't want to be a problem. It's just... I'm not sure what to do. What about uh, husband? Boyfriends? <laughs> him? Nicky Burton? I called him. Got no reply. Mrs. Harrow's worried about her little girl. She can't look after her. Yeah, well, this is a social services problem, isn't it? Well, not exactly. I recorded the report as a vulnerable missing person. It's totally out of character for her to leave her little girl. Simon, can you get a move on with that report? Yes, Mum. I've got to go now. Yeah, OK, OK, if you say so. No husband, but there is a boyfriend, Nicky Burton. She works in a bar and a massage parlour. Pinkers, King's Road? Yep. That's a knocking shop. Or it was. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Just a wild guess. Right. Let's look into it. I've not seen her for days. She's one of her moods. So don't ask me where she is. Has she not called you? No. Look, I've got to work. I can't look after Justine. Don't look at me. Have you tried the pub? Yes. She didn't turn up for the lunchtime shift today. And they've not seen her since Thursday. She is your kid. It's about time you took responsibility. Not my problem. To be honest, she really let me down. I mean, she's not phoned, and she has clients that won't go with anyone else. So last time you saw her was when? Thursday night. Is she in trouble? Is there anyone I can talk to who saw her Thursday during the day? You're about Susie. Listen, I don't want any trouble. This is a legitimate business. If she's got problems, I don't want to know. I mean, what the girls do in their spare time is their business. Know what I mean? How about I look into just what sort of business you do run here, Mrs Fuller? I mean, you want cars and uniforms, you can have them. And that's going to make your private clients run. Now, all I want to do is to ask you a few questions. All right? Take her into the back room. I don't know where she is, and to be honest, I don't give a shit. And you guys coming around don't do me no favors. You have a sexual relationship with Miss Harrow? No, we play Monopoly. Mr. Burton, no one has seen Susan Harrow since Thursday night. Well, they're one day ahead of me, because the last time I saw her was Wednesday. And she's made no contact since then? No.
We've searched the place. No sign of any diary. In fact, the place is spotless. And all of her clothes still seem to be there. Right. None of the men have left their names, so they've got to be regular clients. Maybe check with the neighbours. Listen, some of these girls take off for a week with a punter. No, not this one. And as you said, this one's got a kid that she really does take good care of. Boyfriend's still not heard from her? No. Listen, the drain's got to be taken up. We've got a stench. You advertise 24 hours. Yeah, and I run a business and all. Right, fine. It's not the effing toilets, Vernon. They flush fine. Mm. Cleaner drainer coming. Last thing I need is a bloody environmental shit edge nosing around. Don't pull my license like that. Flush it now. What? Flush it! Tell them to do the sinks. Run the wash basin from the toilets. Just turn all of them on. There's nothing wrong with them. Are you from Cleaner Drain? Well, bloody time, too. It's not even for the club drains. Must be out there. Come on, Eric, let's have a look. Smoke that. What's out here? That's waste ground. A bastard won't sell me for car parking. I should get our front down, we're getting packed in it. Come on, lad. Get further on. <laughs> it's stronger here. You smell it? What do you think I brought you guys in for? It's been stinking for days and now it's got worse. Is it drains? I'm out. No way. You not get drains dug this far from main sewage park. It's really bad now. Well, Tell you what I have got. Bloody yes. rats. Had the vermin control buggers down here laying down poison pellets. I said to them, you sure these pellets aren't attracting them? So they look like they've been dining out. Big mothers. And we've got stray dogs, cats. It's a ruddy sentry out here. Yeah. I've offered a good it's... price for this land to use as a car park. Tarts bring their clients back here. I mean, if you were a car park, you'd not get that problem. I'd have someone on duty. What's that? Right, well, there's not a lot we can do tonight except cordon off the area. The body is still at the site? Yep, I've contacted AMEP, the crime scene coordinator and the FSS are on their way. They've brought in a forensic biologist, a Dr. Deirdre Smith. She's been dead for some time, and decomposition is advanced, but with no sign of plant life inside the corpse. Oh, dear. Looks like injuries to throat, breast. There's rodents. I need this area cleared for examination, but uh, don't move her yet. I need to look for any blood distribution. Have we got an idea on her? Not yet. No purse, nothing on the body, but Ollie. the raincoat fits the description of the type worn by Susan Harrow, and the victim wore a wig, same as Susan Harrow. Still, oh, may not be her. Oh, come on, you were there, you saw her. Look, they found 200 quid inside her shoe. Fine, you know, lots of Tom's stuff there, and he's there, they're working the streets. But you see, I don't think Susan Harrow is a hard-bitten slag. She's got this nice kid. God, I hope it's all right. Maybe it isn't. I mean, Dr. Smith said the body looked as if it had been dumped a long time, so... Wrong. Body had severe mutilations. The mild weather last week advanced decomposition. So? Hi, Pat. Sorry to miss you last night. Am I staying? Yeah, if your governor gives the OK, bother you. What do you think? 
Well, I thought we were worked together pretty well on the last one, and I need someone already familiar with the case. Thanks, Guff. Yeah, but the uh, devil you know, huh? OK, let's get a right deed and uh, get moving. Uh, this Delia Smith Deirdre seems to Gough, know. Deirdre Guff, Delia's the cordon bleu cook. All I know is Delia's pretty meticulous, and whether she can cook or not is immaterial to me. You got some photographs of Susan Harrow? Yeah. Good, bring them. I hope you've got a strong stomach. Do you want me to start it in We'll be there in 10, 15 minutes, OK? It's positive. It's Susan Harrow. Where's the little girl, Justine? I don't know. Do you know if Jill contacted social services? I, I don't know. Look, what about Barton, this boyfriend? Well, he's been done for pimping, he's served time for drug dealing, and she is his girlfriend, but he's not stupid. But he was dumped right beside his club. This one's going to take all day. The amount of mutilation and decomposition, I'll need time. And Dr. Smith had her on site long enough. OK. Now you know why we have no time to waste. What kind of madness does that? The kind that's going to do it again. The victim has been identified as the prostitute Susan Harrow. She was reported missing at Southampton Street last Friday. D.I. North investigated her disappearance, and she'll be staying with us for the duration of the inquiry. This one has been worst in my entire career. It's going to be tough on all of us. I won't get the preliminary post-mortem report till this afternoon, but having seen the victim, it's obvious she's been tortured. I want the witness, Cherie Moyer, re-interviewed. According to her statement, she last saw the victim talking to a possible punter driving some kind of white van. Dave, what have you got? D.I., you are checking Crimmit for recent stops. All divisions have been notified. Good. Talk to the boyfriend, Nicky Button. See if Susie was in the club last night. Go back to the bar she walked in, back to the massage parlor. OK, we got Satchel, we got Hutchins, Ashton, family liaison. We have Baxter, Henschel, Phelps. And our fresh new baby detective, Brown. Hi, Dave. Good up. I reckon this is her. Uh, Dr. Smith. Oh, Lieutenant, Superintendent Walker. D.I. North. Hello. What do we have? Well, we're not getting much for you, I'm afraid. I'd say without doubt she was dumped, not killed in the area. OK, what kind of weapon are we looking for? Well, judging by the cuts to the clothing and the body, I'd say a knife. I've got some loose fibres taken from that wire fence, but I understand this area was frequently used by prostitutes. Yeah, her name was Susan Harrow. Oh, good. I'd like access to her home, please. Fine. No, we've already been. There's nothing there. Well, I'd still like to go. I mean, no offence, but I know what I'm looking for. Thank you. Okay. This is D.I. North, going to be working with us. Morning, Mom. I don't know. I only saw it for a few seconds, but to be honest, they all look alike. It was quite big, though, not like a delivery van, if you know what I mean. Just take your time. We'll go through them again. Just try and remember everything you can. I am. But, you see, I got this taxi. I sort of turned just to wave goodbye. That's all right. It's OK. Just look at the van, Cherie. Mr. Burton, I'm Detective Sergeant. Look. I've said this over and over. I last saw her Wednesday night, and that's it. She's not called. She's not come round. She's... Why didn't you bastards come clean? 
If you're trying to lay living off your moral earnings on me, then screw you. Mr. Burton, I'm afraid I have to tell you that Susan Harrow is dead. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, yeah. OK, thanks. No joy in the tart with a white van, but they've got a list of Harrow's clients, ones that use the massage parlour. Right. Anything coming from the pub she worked at? No, but she worked hard and was well liked. Right, if you want to recap, I'll have to try and work all this newfangled equipment. It's supposed to reduce the length of time spent over the cadavers. But fathoming it all out is quite nerve-wracking. Right. She's been dead for less time than I first thought. The open wounds and the warm weather last week sped up decomposition. When do you think she was killed? Obviously, you can't give an exact time. But the contents of her stomach show quite a substantial meal, a curry. Narrows it down to just over a week ago. No sign of skin or human blood beneath the nails, all intact and exceptionally long. No nail varnish chipped either, so she didn't claw off her attacker. But she has distinct clamp markings on her left wrist, as if she'd been handcuffed. Grazed knees and bruises at the back of her thighs. I'd say she'd been forced into a kneeling position. Forensics might have some fibres for you. Now the... Uh, quite terrible, as you can see. The victim is minus her left breast, with her right one severely slashed. Severe bruising round the neck. And she has a 25-centimetre-long slice, almost from right to left ear. Probably an exceptionally sharp knife, thin-bladed, must have been quite long. The cuts are quite clean. But now, for the worst part. It had to be some kind of very sharp instrument to have made such a deep incised wound. Almost sliced through the abdominal wall from the vagina upwards. The organs are pale. I'd say she bled to death. But interestingly enough, her face was untouched. You can see just above the right ear, a large clump of hair has been torn out, but it's not been found. Any semen? Can't tell yet. All swabs and samples will still be with forensics. <laughs> they also have small slivers of wood taken from the vagina and intestine. Susie came round with Justine at about six, maybe a little later. But I don't get in from work till at least a quarter to six. And she had some clothes for Justine and some fruit and stuff, and she left her overnight bag. Said she'd stay over, you see. So, so I made up this. It's a sofa bed. May I have a look at the overnight bag, Mrs. Harrow? Can I open it? Did she say where she was going? To work, of course. Sometimes she had to stay late. I know what you're saying about her, but I don't believe it. She was a good girl, a good mother. She always was. Psst. Not true. Not true. She wasn't pro. She wasn't. I mean, I'm, I'm my mother. I'd have known. Right. Now, Bibi, we're going to need a list of all her friends. Friends? She hardly had time to socialise. She was always working. She got no child support, you know. She paid for everything herself. She was always so nicely turned out. And... I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
about Justine. I don't know what I'm going to do. Nana, when is Mummy coming home? I said I was going to read you that story, didn't I? Come on, shall we go and find that book? Hmm? Bibi, would you allow a member of the child protection team to talk to Justine? Are you taking her away from me? No, 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 no. It's just that we need to ask her some questions and we're not allowed to interview her ourselves. Can't Jill do it? I'm afraid not. You see, CPT is specially trained. Don't worry, love. We'll be close by. You know, sometimes the procedures we are forced to follow make our jobs very difficult. She'll be well looked after. I promise. Okay. Do you want to come and finish up your orange juice? What have you got there? Mummy. Do you remember the last time you saw your mummy? Mummy never came to get me from school. And I got a taxi all by myself. Did you? So you remember that day then, do you? Yes. Miss Peace, my teacher, came to school gate. She said, where's your mummy? On that day, when your mummy didn't come to meet you from school, can you tell me if there was anyone else at home before you left with your mummy? Nikki. Oh, who is Nikki? Mummy's friend. He gave me a Game Boy and spilled all the orange juice at breakfast. He spilled what? Spilled all the orange juice at breakfast. Mum got angry and they had a big fight. Did Nikki get angry? No. Mummy got angry. Can you tell me more about Nikki? This day is over. Not wakes me up because she works very late. Where's mummy? Where's mummy? <laughs> Okay, guys, we've had confirmation that the watch find at the site was Susie Harrow, so we now know that she definitely died around about 11.40 p.m. on Thursday, 16th of April. Now, so far, the last sighting of Susie was at 11.10 that night, maybe picking up a punter and a white van. Now, the witness, Cherie Moyer, can't say more than that, other than it might be one or other of those two. We've uh, checked out our regular clients from the massage parlour. We've got one for nail extensions, the other a Mr. Smith. Massage and ham relief is a regular every Thursday, and we're checking the rest. Right, we've got a bit of development on Nicky Burton, the boyfriend. He says he didn't see the victim after Wednesday night, but according to Jill, his daughter told the CPT he stayed over, leaving Thursday morning. That's not much use. Well, why lie? I'll bring him in, let's find out. OK, guys, I'm off home. Thanks. No, hang on, hang on. Um, one last thing. We need to find her handbag with the body. Could be black with a shoulder strap. I'm afraid that's all we have to go on. OK, that is it, everyone. Get some shut-eye, thanks. Have you spoken to a press officer? I mean, you ought to put out something to help trace this van. Oh, right, deal with it for me, would you? I've got a cracking headache. Okay. Search, fancy a paint. Which pub are you going to? Oh, great. Thank you very much. Julian, could you get in touch with the press office for me? See if we can do a crime watch, find out if anyone's seen a white van, you know, usual spiel. Yep, sure. Now, it's a busy street, and it wasn't very late at night, so if you walked down there and you saw anything suspicious or out of the ordinary, then please, call us now. <laughs> Flat. 
The place was very clean and well maintained. The fibres we took from her knees do not match with the carpet from the flat. It's a commercial brand though, rough coarse type, used inside vehicles. The good news is that we found semen on her clothing, which I've submitted for DNA testing. We also found several tufts of fibres made up of three different colours, red, green and blue. Now, these could well have come from the attacker. I won't continue with this fibre examination until I've got something to compare it with. But, um, well, narrows the field a wee bit. Now, in my opinion, it's highly unlikely that she was killed at the flat. There was no trace of blood. And she would have bled extensively. I'm looking at slivers of wood that were sent over to see if there's any semen on them. Take a look. The preliminary PM report indicated that the uh, injuries were likely to have been caused by an arrow-shaped weapon. And I understand from Foster that these circles show that it had been twisted whilst inside her. Very unpleasant. Foster's good, isn't he? Doesn't miss much. to stop the dead. Oh, my God. No, baby, come on now. Let's sit down. Oh, my God. They got no right. No right to call my daughter a tart. I'm sorry. They got no right. Me. Give it to me now. Oh, bloody soul of them. They got no right. We just have to clarify some details from your last statement, sir. You told us that you last saw Miss Harrow on Wednesday, but Justine tells us you were there Thursday morning. Look, I was just pissed off, you know? I didn't know she was dead. I just thought you was coming after me. So you're now saying you were lying and you did see Miss Harrow last Thursday? Morning, yeah. I stayed over at her place Wednesday night. What time did you leave Miss Harrow's flat on Thursday? Breakfast time, when she took the kids to school. Did she tell you her plans for the day? No. Did you and Miss Harrow part on good terms? Did you? I made a stupid argument because I spilt the orange juice. That was the last time I saw her. I remember. It was a black leather shoulder bag with a gold clasp in the shape of a tiger. I remember now. It was leather lined as well. Uh, with gold links on the strap. Do you know the make? No. But it was expensive. She was always nicely turned down. And she had... She, she, she would have had a makeup bag, and uh, she always carried a picture of just teen, and uh, she would have had a file of facts in it. She once said to me, God help me if I ever lost this mum. It's got my life in it. What's the girl? <laughs> it's King's Cross CRD. It's urgent. There's a Detective Inspector Batchley from King's Cross on line two, Mum. What's up? They've got one. One what? Same mutilations. Hello, Detective Inspector Pat North. Have you seen Walker? Yes, I do take my responsibility seriously. Hello? Hello, Lynn. 
I've just had a call from D.I. Batchley, King's Cross CID. Murder index at Scotland Yard have contacted him. Riyadh job. What? There's another one. Similar mutilations found last night. I knew it. I bloody knew it. Hang on, hang on. She's still alive. They're just not sure for how long. They're, they're just about to operate on her now. She's got terrible slash wounds to her neck, her horrific injuries to her breast. And she's an old prostitute, yep. Yeah. yeah. She's been around for, well, as long as I've been at King's Cross. She's tough. Quite old. About how old? Late 30s. We've had her in more times than I've had up dinners. How's she doing? Are you a relative? No, I'm not. Is she going to live? I've been trying to intubate her so that she can be the off of me. But her epic losses is too swollen and I can't see her vocal cords. I can't even ventilate her with the mask. You better do the tracheotomy right now. Oh, the oxygen saturation is dropping. It's down to 60%. Night, Carol. Night, Joe. Oh, well done today. Your essay was excellent. Thanks. I'll see you next week. Bloody car's gone dead again, so um, I'll pick up a taxi. Don't worry if I'm late. <sighs> Tell her Teletubbies go to sleep straight away. <laughs> oh. Well, look, I'll be home in about three quarters. Right, body was found just after midnight. Carol Lennox, not a prostitute. Married woman, three kids, teacher. Her husband contacted us when she didn't arrive home. They subsequently found her car outside the college that she taught at. Yeah, God, it's not the same, is it? Yeah, only worse, if it could possibly be. This is how they found her. Must have been at the scene since this morning. Have you read this? This guy, this git! Heard her screaming for two bloody hours! Gov, D.I. Batchley wants a word. National Crime Faculty are analysing the data on Harrow, Sparks and Lennox to try and link her. Oh, tell him I'll see him at the hospital. No, hang on, hang on. Put him through to my phone. Oh, Jeff, it's Pat. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, hold on. Um, better give me some numbers in case it comes up. Can we still see her? Well, Pat's just getting an update. Or a date. Huh? Right. See you in a bit. Batchley says we've got to get over there fast. Right. See you later. Batchley's fixed up some kind of buzzer. Green PS, red for no. Yeah, Batchley's an idiot. 
Oh, come on. It's the best he could come up with at short notice. Walker. You no, know, she can't speak. She's got four yeah. broken fingers, and the doctors say when we've only this? got ten minutes. Did he? Shit. Look, check to see if you can identify the mate. Hi. She's still all right to see us, is she? Yeah. Doctors are very wobbly. Yeah, but keep on her, will you? She's still hanging in there. Yeah. You look nice. OK. Thanks. You coming? Dave. So what have you got there? Well, we could see a movie first. Eat late. Yeah, that sounds great. Shh, damn. This doesn't work in here. Any change? Look, at Satchel's witnessed the Iranian bloke reckons we're looking for a white Sherpa van. I've sent Brown over to the massage parlor to interview that Sheree Moyer lassie. And I'll run some pictures of Sherpa vans by her, see if that jogs her memory. You like Chinese? And there's a really good one down Audley Street. Be nice. Detective Inspector Batchley. Excuse me. Chinese. Are you pulling him, Detective Inspector? Piss off. That's out of order. Yeah, so are you. Slightly. Green for yes, red for no. Do you understand? Mm. Good girl. Mm. Okay, let's make this as short as possible, yeah? Mm. Marilyn, mm. did you know the man who attacked you? Mm. No. Was he white? Yes, dark haired. No. Blonde. Uh. Yes, very blonde. No. Blonde mousy. Uh. Yes. Short haired. Yes. Any facial hair. No. Uh. seen him in the area before? No. Did he drive a car? No. Some kind of van? Yes, it was a van. OK, I'll run through some colours. Just press when I say the right one. Blue. Green. Yellow. Red. Maroon. White. Yes. Yes, it was white, Marilyn. Hang on, hang on. She's trying to tell us something else. What is it, Marilyn? It's, it's, it's something about the last question. Um, outside. Um, the doors. The doors. Something about the doors of the van. Um, front door of the van. No, back, back doors of the van. Something on the back doors of the van. Paris. Writing. Some kind of company name. Not writing, no. Um, but there's something about the back doors of the van, yeah? I'm sorry, she can't do any more. Her pulse is thready. Marilyn, you OK? Can you hear me, Marilyn? Marilyn, 
My Try and tell me something about the back doors of the van, yeah? I need to speak to Dr. Jaffrey um, immediately. Was there a picture? There? No. Marilyn Sparks' mean? respiratory rate is the rapid pen? and shallow, up to 32 per what? minute. She's in a cold sweat oh, pen, and her yeah. oxygen saturation is down to 88%. Okay. This should stop. Marion, watch the zigzag on the back door of the van. Give her the buzzer. Marion, watch the zigzag on the back door of the van. Good girl. Was that a red zigzag on the back door of the van? Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. No, please, hang on just a minute. She's trying to tell us something else. Is that right, Marilyn? Keep um, going, sweetheart. You're doing well. Is it my coat? No. Jacket, sweater, red, green, blue. The colour of the yes. sweater, red, green and blue, yeah? She's still trying to know something. That, that's it. Up now. Nurse, prepare an adrenaline nebulizer, please. Oh, is that it, mother? Did the red, blue and green sweater have a hood? Yes. He's white. Slim build, mostly blonde hair, about five foot ten, drives a friggin' white van with a red zigzag on the back doors and was wearing a red, green and blue sweater with a hood. Somebody has got to know this bastard. Good night. Hey. Told you she's getting a leg out of Blanche, right? Huh? Yeah, he's a big jersey. Oh, he's a bloody good prop. Place the Mets rugby team. Yeah, I could do with a bloody good prop. Lynch would have got me morning, noon, and night. How's your wife? Moved in with her sister six months ago. Oh, sorry. Why didn't you tell me? You think you and your wife are going to get back together? I sincerely hope not. Angie wouldn't approve. Angie? Who the hell's Angie? Remember that case we were on last July? Old guy found on some waste ground. I yeah. met her then. She's a social worker. <laughs> that redhead. <laughs> That's the one. A right little cracker. You know what's nice? She understands. She's easy. Yeah. Yet to be with. You don't get GBH of the ear hole every time I'm late home from work. I had your dinner on the table over half an hour ago. What time do you call Shut it? Up. See what I see. One vehicle ahead. Oh my God! What's on the back doors? Urgent PNC check, please. Delta three one eight Foxtrot Yankee Foxtrot. Stand by, girl. Yeah, overtake. Overtake, nice and easy. Let's sit behind him and take a closer look. Come on. Come on. I don't believe our luck. It's got to be him. Right, we're there. Walker receiving. Read your car check. Delta three one eight Foxtrot Yankee Foxtrot. Last registered keeper shown as Mr. Brian Andrew Morton. Morton, Morton Electronics, 24 Penn Hill, London, SW8. Should be a white shirt. He's turning left. Band. Okay. Let's do it. Right, Dave? Pull him over. Detective Superintendent Walker, can you step outside the van, please? Get out. Get to the van. Are you the owner of this van, son? Uh, no. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy Garrett. Morton. Yep. Yep. Morton's Electrics. James L. Garrett. Damon Morton. I work for him. It's, it's all right. It's not nicked. Yeah. When? 
Is this about jumping the red light up at the crossroads? <laughs> okay. Where are they going to be? Thanks. Yeah, they're on their way. Uh, Mr. Garrett, we're seizing this van because we have reason to believe it's been involved in a series of criminal offences. Shit. Look, I was just picking some stuff up for Damon. How am I going to get back to the yard? We might be able to give you a lift. OK, Jimmy, let me go. Just call him out. Time. What have you been doing? Lights. Christ's sake! What's all the drama about? You're blinding me. Damon Morton, I'm Detective Superintendent Walker, Southampton Street. I'm arresting you in suspicion of the attempted murder of Marlon Spark. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Take him away. It's him. The exact description Marilyn Spark gave. Brian Andrew Moore calls himself Damon. See what we can come up with. Dub wants you in with him. I'm in three with a buttball Jimmy Garrett. He works more in his electrical yard. There's a team of forensics there now and at the house, right? And what about this van? It's gone to the lab. Bloody red stripe right across the back doors. We got him. Mrs. Cindy Morton. I'm Detective Constable Jack Hutch. Please open the door, Mrs. Morton. We have authority to search the premises. Thank you. We'll tread gently for now. He hasn't asked for a brief yet, so we'll uh, leave it at that for the moment. What's he like? Morton's a cocky bastard. Very relaxed, laughing and joking on the way in. Married two kids. But I just don't know. You ready? Yeah. I've warned you, you'd better not wake them kids. I'll let you know when I need to get in their room. Meanwhile, if you just wait here with DC Hutchins. Don't worry, love. That shouldn't take too long. How's it going, Robson? Okay, sir. Yeah. Is this your sweater? How long have you been working for Brian Moore? Damon. Uh, about 18 months. Do you often have to work late? No. Oh. But uh, you were working late tonight, then? <clears throat> well, I have a job to finish off. What kind of work do you do? Fix things. Electrical things. Have you, um, have you been only work for this woman? No. Okay. I'm out this one. Do you recognise this one? How about her? Jimmy?
Okay, let's go. Mr. Morton, you have been arrested on suspicion of the attempted murder of Madeline Spark, which occurred on Sunday the 26th of April. Do you understand? Yeah. Did you drive your white van at all on Sunday? That would be the 26th of April. Sunday. What do you mean at any point, or do you want to give me a specific time? 9.15 at midnight. Oh, Sunday evening. Nah. I spent the night with Cheryl. Clapham. Cheryl. Good old. She's my girlfriend. 14 Ridbelow Road. Clapham. Right. And I presume you know my home address is different to the yard. Does anyone else have access to your van? Yeah. Quick work, please, Gav. Excuse me. 2150, Detective Superintendent Walker leaving the room. Superintendent Walker, head of Constable Hutchins, re-entering the room at 21.51. Mr. Morton, do you own this red, blue and green hooded sweater, exhibit DP-10? Find it in your house. Oh, it's Jimmy's. The guy you got next door. He works for me. Must have left it. Check with Garrett. Detective Constable Hutchins is in the room. How long have you owned your white Sherpa van registration number D318FYF? About five years, I think. Does anyone else drive it? Yeah, Jimmy drives it. Sometimes I lend it to Antonio Bellini. Family of Wops, Italian. Well, him and his brother were brought up here. Antonio Bellini. Sounds like some kind of ice cream. Or circus act. Yeah, I'll circus act. Do you right. Well, I must have left it there this morning, but it's my sweater. Does Damon ever wear it? No, it's mine! OK. Let's get back to the photos, yeah? Please. I just don't want to... You can see their faces. These faces are any faces. I can't follow what you're saying, Jimmy. Them! Please, I don't want to look at them. Why don't you want to look at them? Damon never had nothing to do with this, never. You've got to tell him that this wasn't my fault. Wait, wait, wait. First, you said that Damon wasn't... Didn't do anything. I did it. What did you do? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're going to have to help me out here, Jimmy. Will you please look at this photograph again? The name of this woman is Marilyn Spark. <laughs> a, I did her. She's a tart, works down the King's Cross. I got her. What do you mean you got her? I picked her up in the van, I got her in the back, like the others. And, and... Uh, I'd, I did it to her, you know, cuffed her. Can you give me more details? Do you mean you handcuffed her? Like this! I made a kneel, I did it to her! What exactly <coughs> did you do, Jimmy? Uh, this is not related to this case, Mr Morton, but do you recall where you were on the night of the 16th of April? And that would be a Thursday. Uh... I was at home watching TV with the wife and kids. 
<laughs> what an impressive memory you have, Mr. Morton. How about last night? Home again. What? Home? With your wife and kids? Yeah. Well, we'll have to check your alibi, won't we, Mr. Morton? See if it matches what your friend Mr. Garrett tells us. He's a mental retard. Can't remember what he had for lunch. You see how hard I go out of an evening. I prefer to spend the time with my wife and kids. And Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl. Take a look at this photograph, please, Mr. Morton. I've never seen her before in my life. Very sorry, I can't help you. I mean, it's obvious something terrible must have happened to her. Or else, why would you arrest me? And since you were with Jimmy Garrett when you made that arrest, I can only presume you must have said something. Yeah? Implicated me in something. Otherwise, why would you even bother with me? because she gave us a very good description of the man who attacked her. Would you be prepared to take part in an ID parade, Mr. Morton? Yeah. I'm afraid you'll be held overnight to assist our inquiries. Please contact my wife and tell her I won't be home. She gets worried. Interview terminated at 22.23. Take it there. Good night, Detective Inspector Knoll. Good night. Oh, you're very pretty when you smile. Mike, the fat boy has admitted to doing every single one of them. What? Carol Lennox, Susan Harrow, Marilyn Spark, all of them. He's given me details, he's told me how he handcuffed them first. He says he did it all. And that Lord of the Flies in there is as pure as a driven snub. Solicitor. He doesn't seem to want one, or he doesn't care. All he wants us to be sure of is that he did it all, and Damon has to be released. Those were his words. You have to release Damon. Get Garrett to repeat that on tape now. We'll do a more in-depth interview tomorrow, when he's got a brief. That's weird, you know. He's right on target with Lennox and Arrow, but with Marilyn Sparks, something's not quite right. Is he lying? I don't know. He doesn't know Sparks still alive, though. And Damon Morton's got an alibi for every night in the week, so he says. Damon. That's the devil's name, isn't it? Or is it Damien? Morton fits Marlon's description. But the Garrett kid says it was him, says he did all three. I think he's lying about Marlon Spark, and I think Morton's lying as well. Satch, you go for Jimmy's family. Do his drum over as well. The women all had a breast removed. Maybe the killer collects trophies. Yeah, the sweater found at Morton's house has been sent to forensics, so it'll be a while before we get anything. And um, we're waiting on DNA results from the semen found on Susan Harris' clothing to see if it matches up with Jimmy and Damon. I'll interview the friend Antonio Bellini. And we'll have another go at Mr. Morton. OK, guys, let's get some shot-eye. We've got a long haul ahead of us. I can't keep her here, Nikki. I've been off work two weeks now. What am I supposed to do? I should be at work right now. Take some responsibility. You know what I'm talking about. She's missing school. I'm doing what I can. But I'm 68. I can't go! Money. It's a responsibility. Social services said if I can't look after her, she should go into a foster home.
Your nan have been reading to you. I thought, Mummy. You seen the film Bambi? No. You have. I took you, remember? Last. No, Christmas before last we went. You cried when Bambi's mum died. And. What have you told her? Is mum with Bambi's mummy? Don't, don't lay this on me. Uncle Nicky doesn't. He can't. Mum's not coming home. No. Mummy isn't coming back. I'll still see you. So will you go to sleep for me? I had your lot here until four o'clock this morning. Yes, it's all right. This won't take long. Yeah, well, I've not been very well. So what is it now? Shall we sit down? What's he been arrested for? Your husband has been arrested on suspicion of the attempted murder of a woman called Marilyn Spark. Do you recognize that name? No. Yes, it was my wedding anniversary on Sunday. Since my husband died, it's been a terrible night for me. And Jimmy understands I don't like to be on my own. He sent out for a Chinese. More for him than me. I'd wanted a baby for so many years. I'd given up. Eric said it never mattered. Eric was my husband. Then I found out I was pregnant with Jimmy. He's always been odd. We had a very difficult time with him growing up. Sometimes he could be so nasty, bad-tempered. And he was ever so placid. Give you anything. Is it stolen cars? Do you know a Damon Morton, Mrs. Carroll? I won't have him in the house. Mr. Garrett, my name is James Cookham. I'm a solicitor, and I'm here to represent you. Okay. <laughs> now, you have been arrested on suspicion of. Did Damon send you? So you're saying that Damon was at home on all three dates that I've asked you about, yeah? Yeah, that's right. We spend a lot of time at home. Saves on babysitters. I see. Do you know someone called Cheryl? That little slag. Yeah, I know her. She's a right tart and she's all of, what, 16? Start ever so young nowadays, don't they? It's the drugs they're on. They're all at it. I never touch him. Cheers. You 
You want help or something? Yes, please. Oh, what do you want? Mr. Bellini. That's me? What do you want? Is your son Antonio at home? He was when I left. I don't know now. Here, you open up. I get the fresh rolls. <clears throat> Close it, eh? Uh, they used to deliver, but now nobody does nothing for nothing. I say, look, you want to charge extra for delivery? I pick it up myself. Bertram, I caused a fire. I told you to open up. Go and get your brother. He's uh, police, all right? Yeah. They want to see him. Berto, please. So, why you want to see him? Fighting, is it? No, it's not fighting. Mr. Bellini, do you know a Damon Morton? Hmm. Sure. He's dirt. Madman. <laughs> he thinks he can eat here and not pay. I said, well, what do you think this is? Huh? Charity? <laughs> He's bad. Got, uh, got bad feelings. So what's my Tony done? Huh? Serious, eh? Is it serious? Because he's a good boy. He's a bit crazy, man. Not like his brother. Hmm? I got one with the brain. Hey, Roberto. Roberto's going to university. Hmm? Bravo, ragazzi. Huh? Four A-levels. Antonio. Tony, you're coming down. What do you want? Antonio, mannaggia. Thank you for it, Papa. Antonio, I'm Detective Superintendent Walker, Southampton Street. Why don't you have a seat, son? I would just like to ask you a few questions concerning the investigation into the attempted murder of a woman, Marilyn Spark. What do you mean? I understand you work for Damon Morton, Antonio. Yes. Mr. Morton tells me he sometimes lends you his van, is that correct? Yes. What's going on? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Papa. I killed them. I killed them. No matter to Good afternoon, Doctor. What's the news? Well. It's all very pressured, isn't it? The forensic labs are working overtime as well. Ah, right. Your last victim had similar wounds, more aggressive than the previous one, but similar breast mutilation. A large clump of hair was torn out by the roots, and she was also penetrated by a similar object, sharp, pointed, a bit like an arrowhead. The tissues are torn, but there are some cuts to the vagina and intestines. No semen in the body, just in the clothes. Hmm. Apparently, forensics are rushing through the DNA tests, so you should get both sets of results by the end of the week. Poor woman died a terrible death. You can see by the amount of bleeding surrounding the laceration, she was alive while they were done. Do you think the same person committed both? Well, if not, then somebody was copycatting, I think the expression is. But one of the reasons I asked you to come over this picture. Hey, wait a second. This one. There are heavy marks on her abdomen, which indicates that she was probably held down. It probably would have taken at least two people to inflict these wounds. But as you can see, these marks here are larger than the ones on her forearms and throat. This was a very sadistic, almost satanic, don't quote me, killing. The perpetrator must have taken great pleasure from the agony of his victim. On the left are the fine slivers of wood removed from Susan Harrow's abdominal wall. As you can see, the ones discovered inside Carol Lennox on the right are almost identical. Looks to me like the same weapon was used on both victims. OK, everyone, this is what's going down. Gloves brought in Antonio Bellini, who also admits to all three attacks. Now, he does odd jobs for Morton, drives the van, 
And he's been crying since we brought him in. Solicitor's with him now. We won't know any more until we've questioned him. Now, according to Jimmy Garrett's mother, he was at home on the night he's admitted to being involved in the abduction of Marilyn Spark. I knew it. She's pretty adamant about it. Says it's her wedding anniversary, 26th of April. She had it ringed on her calendar. Yeah, what the hell is he playing at? Now, Morton's wife's still not giving away on any of our dates. Says he was definitely with her. However, Morton himself disagrees. Says he was not at home on Sunday night but with his girlfriend, ex-babysitter Cheryl Goodall. So the wife's lying. Could be telling Corky's for all the dates. OK, anything else? Yeah. Cindy Morton hates his girlfriend, so I'd like to concentrate on trying to push her about that. Or indeed, Cheryl. I've not interviewed her yet. OK, do it. Now, has anything, anything at all come from that search for Morton Yard? Uh, no, sir. He's, he's got a lot of unpaid bills, but he's up to speed on his tax and his VAT. He's got no previous records, zilch. Um, if the missing body parts... You can use the word breasts, Palmer. Um, there were no severed breasts found, sir. Yeah, OK. What about this eyewitness? The guy from the factory? Right. Anybody get back to him? No, Saeed. Nah, he's all over the shop. First he says he saw a white van, then he didn't, then he heard more than one voice, then only one. He's really edgy. Yeah, anything on Morton's van? No, still nothing. Waiting on forensics. You can hurry, blood. No, you just a do. <laughs> Try singing it, Dave. <laughs> I'm showing the suspect a picture of Marilyn Spark. Uh, you don't have to say that, sir. The cameras. Yes, I did it. Jimmy, just wait until they ask you a question. Jimmy, we had a word with your mum, and she says you were with her that evening. Where were you last Sunday night, the 26th of April? Uh, uh 26th of April, um, I was at home with my mother. It was her wedding anniversary. Well, <laughs> well, not really. <clears throat> my dad's dead. You at home all evening, Jimmy? Well, not after. After what? After dinner, I went out. I did her then. What time was that? Half eleven. I did her then. Sorry, I've just washed my hair. I've got an interview for a job this afternoon. That's fine. It's actually a daughter I wanted to speak to, uh, Cheryl. Well, she's not here. She's gone to the clinic. She works part-time as a receptionist. Right. What time will she be back? After four. What's this about? Can you remember what you were doing last Sunday night? Yeah. Weekends, I work in a wine bar. In the evenings, yeah? Yes. From seven to midnight, every Saturday and Sunday. So that's where I was. Right, and what about Cheryl? Oh, I don't know. What is this about? Do you know Damon Morton? I do, yeah. I loathe him. And I've tried to keep Cheryl away from him. That's why we moved here. We used to live two doors away from him. Cheryl babysat for them. He's got two kids. She was only 15 when it started. What started? Is that what you're here for? Well, thank God somebody's doing something about him. I told him he was lucky I didn't get the police on him. This is good all if your daughter was underage. Why didn't you report him? Because Cheryl was hysterical. She said she loved him. And then if I did anything against him, she'd run off with him. And is she still seeing him? I hope to God she isn't. She swore she wouldn't. So you wouldn't know if he was here last Sunday night? I just want to know about Damon for. He hasn't been here, Cheryl, has he? Yeah, he has, as a matter of fact, every Saturday and Sunday. Oh. Feel better now, do ya? Cheers. Marilyn Sparks not going to be fit to ID anything for at least a week. We're going to have to let Morton go. What you got, Pat? Cheryl Goodall insists that Damon Morton was with her on Sunday night. I'm sorry. Bugger! One of them's lying. We've got sod all on him, and I'm convinced he's the one behind all this. What about Jimmy and Antonio? You're saying they're innocent? No, no, no. Now, Damon Morton is the key. And we've got to let him go. Four silver rings. One silver bracelet. One set of keys. 
and one volt. Put some in there, sir. I did it, yes, it was me. There wasn't anybody else. What well, if I was to tell you we have a witness, Jimmy? We were on our own. What do you mean by we? Sounds to me like you were with someone else. Oh, God, look, I'm... Uh, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm all confused. But our witness, Jimmy, says that What he... witness? Nobody came into the alley. They couldn't have seen us. They're lying. No, you are, Jim. Look, you just did it again. If you were, as you have stated, alone in that alley, why did you just say us? I didn't. You did, Jim. Look, it'll even be on video, so just come clean. Who were you with when you killed Carol Lennox? Bob and Tony. Who? The Bellini brothers. This interview is being videoed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. OK. Let's go back through the night of 27th of April again. You've admitted your involvement in the murder of Carol Lennox. Now, were you alone? Yes, sir. We are holding in custody a James Jimmy Garrett. Do you know this man? Yes, sir, I do. How do you know him? I work with him sometimes. On the 27th of April, were you with Mr. Garrett? Uh, yes. Yeah. Has he said something? So you were not, as you have stated, alone. Are you now saying you were not alone, but Mr. Garrett was with you? I don't remember. Oh, no, you don't remember. Come on, Antonio, who the hell are you trying to protect? I'm showing Antonio Bellini a picture of victim Carol Lennox. Take a good look, Mr. Bellini. This is a photograph of a woman you claim to have brutally killed. You also state you acted alone. Now, we have a reliable witness who claims there was more than one man with Carol Lennox. Who else was there? <laughs> you didn't kill her alone, did you? <laughs> did you? No. I was with Jimmy and my brother. Will you please state your brother's name? Roberto Bellini. We did them all together. Oh. Are you saying there were other victims, Mr. Bellini? Yes. A prostitute. She worked at King's Cross. We killed her, too. We enticed her into the van and handcuffed her to the rail inside. I told you. I told you what I said. Uh, you police, you you ask me everything, you know. Yeah, but I you don't... said you had a good view from here, Mr. Al Said. No, it was night, very dark. I could hear. I told them this. I told them I could only hear the screaming. But you know, you hear bad things every night. Yeah, but it went on for a long, long time, didn't it? All right, I saw them. Jimmy Garrett now says Antonio and Roberto Bellini were with him. So does Antonio. It's getting to the point either he needs a shrink or I do. Yeah, you and me both. I'm going to have him arrested. Who? The shrink? Roberto Bellini. You know, it's going to be tough on the old man. One son's bad enough, but two. Unless they're all lying. It's getting very dodgy. Are we going to charge them or what? Our factory witness has changed his statement. It says there could have been four men. Four? I knew it. Yep. And one of them was wearing a hood. It has to be Morgan. Al Saeed had a clear view of the alley. It's not well lit, but at the end of it is a big street light, so... Wait a minute. Are you saying you saw four men with Carol Lennox? Is he sure? Yeah. Four men did this together? Yeah. And he's also now saying he saw a white van parked in the alley. Bastards. Hang on, are we short about Morton? We could be walking into a minefield. Maybe Damon Morton is our own Charlie Manson. Let's bring him back in. Arrest him on suspicion of the murder of Carol Lennox.
Brian Andrew Morton. I'm arresting you on suspicion... Not for Marilyn Spark? No. I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Carol Lennox. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. So who were you with, Mr Bellini? I was with Jimmy Garrett and my brother Antonio. Just the three of you? Yes, sir. The three of us did it. Just the three of you, not four. Damon Morton was not with us. Why did you mention his name? I don't know. I'm going to show you another photograph, Mr Bellini. I will identify this person as it's put in front of you. Susan Harrow. Yeah, we killed her. How did you kill her, Mr Bellini? I asked, how did you kill her, Mr. Bellini? With a knife. Where is the knife? I don't know. What did you do with it? I don't remember. Do you recognize this woman, Mr. Bellini? Yeah. She's, um, she's a prostitute. She works around, uh... King's Cross Station. She's dead too. I, uh, I enticed her into the back of the van. I handcuffed her to, um, there's a rail and inside. And I forced her to the ground. And I made it lie down. confessed to all the attacks and all three of them insist Damon Morton wasn't there. Maybe he wasn't. As I said, Cheryl Goodall insists that Damon Morton was with her on a Sunday night. Yeah, but his wife also insists he was with her. Well, not, not anymore. No, we picked him up yesterday. Little Cindy went out of her way to say she'd made a mistake. So Morton wasn't home on Sunday evening. He was with his girlfriend, Cheryl. Yeah. Pat. Good to go. Right. It's due to solicitor's lists. Right. I think we should get Morton represented. We've got to go to the hospital. Marilyn's out of intensive care, just. Or he be there. Your big rugby prop. No, he won't, actually. But if it's all right with you, I'm meeting him later for a drink. Would you like the name of the wine bar? <laughs> Don't get tetchy. I'm not the tetchy one. <laughs> I told you she was getting her leg over. Yeah. Yeah, you got mine. I've playing around with us. Why the hell are they covering up for him? Let's get Morton a solicitor, perhaps, right? Yeah, well, she normally is. Oh, look who's on the list. Belinda Sinclair. Ah, oh, Christ, I hope he doesn't choose her. She's a pain in the ass. Gov, yeah. there's a Mr Salvatore Bellini asking for you. Who's that? Another brother? No, a father. Mr Bellini. Oh, sir, thank you for seeing me. <clears throat> I'm sorry if uh, this is inconvenient, ma... It's just, I know my sons would not get into bad trouble. What? No murder. I'm afraid they are in trouble, Mr. Bellini. They've already confessed. Would you mind answering some questions for me? I need to know if either of your sons was at home on Sunday the 26th. Or if you know where they were. That is Antonio's birthday. 26th of April. Yes. Well, I make a cake. We have a small family party. Both your sons were there? Yes. Me and my sons. Hey. I knew there was a mistake, eh? I knew this was all confusion. Good 
wish somebody would headhunt me out of this place. You're going to have to replace Sinclair, dear. It's quite extraordinary. This serial murder case, most unusual. Oxley's a bit fresh for something like that, isn't he? I wouldn't have thought you'd let him take the case. Nor Cookham come to mention it. They're both doing rather well now, aren't they? It's an open and shut case. Clients are pleading guilty. Interesting scenario, though. Will they be tried together? Good God, I don't know. It's that unpleasant little man, Detective Superintendent Walker, again. He's heading the investigation, apparently. Yes, Sue? Let's hold on, please. It's for you. Uh, Mr. Damon Morton. <laughs> please. I want to speak to my brother and call my father. <laughs> I'm worried about my father. Mr. Bellini, the police have a videotaped confession where you admit to carrying out two murders. That's right. Please. I want to call my father. <laughs> so, are you saying, Mr. Bellini, that everything that you've said in this statement is the truth? <laughs> Please. I got to call my father. You described one man, mousy blonde, five foot eight or nine, white shirt, red, green and blue sweater with a hood, jeans and trainers. You stated that this man stopped in a white van and approached you. When you agreed to accompany him, you went freely to the back of the van with him. At this point, he became violent and handcuffed you to a rail inside the van. He then abused you sexually. He cut some of your clothes, yeah? This same man proceeded to threaten you with a long knife, thin bladed. He picked out a knife after being shown various drawings. The knife had a black ebony or black plastic and silver handle. In fact, we've now got some photographs of possible knives which fit your descriptions. Right. He forced you to take this knife with your right hand whilst your left hand remained handcuffed to the rail. He said he would kill you if you did not cut yourself. Now, did you see at any time, Marilyn, any other man inside this van? You sure? You sure this man was alone with you in the van? Right. Now, you've been a terrifically brave lady, Marilyn, but if we're going to catch this man, we need you to pick him out in the identity parade. Uh, do you think you'd be prepared to do that for us, Marilyn? Miss Maddox, I'm Detective... Detective Sergeant Satchel, isn't it? You have a good memory. And Detective Superintendent Walker is heading the inquiry? Mm-hmm. I've read the statements. I'm representing a Mr. Damon Morton. I'd like to see him. Oh, he's all yours. Thank you. Mr. Morton, this is your solicitor, Miss Karina Maddox. How's you do, Damon? I feel better when you can get me released. May I call you Karina? No, you may not. Would you leave me with my client, please? Thank you. Now, <clears throat> you've been arrested, but no charges have been brought. Would you like to tell me, in your own words, why you're here? 
I initially I was accused of kidnapping a prostitute and cuffing her inside my van and forcing it to perform oral sex. Then torturing her, mutilating her, before kicking her out in the street. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now it seems I'm accused of murdering someone called Carol Lennox. And the night the prostitute got it, I was with my girlfriend. The other night I was with my wife. I didn't do it. And three men who work for me and drive my van have all been arrested, by the way. That's Jimmy Garrett, Antonio and Roberto Bellini. They've all admitted to doing it. How do you know that, Mr. Morton? Have you spoken to these men? No. I don't need to. I oh, know. Yeah, thanks. That was Kilburn. Where the hell's our side got to? He's cutting a bit fine if he's going to make that ID parade. I wouldn't worry about it. Morton's still with that woman. I was on a case in Fulham about five years ago. Nicknamed a bat woman because of her cape. She's a bloody nightmare. What? Any news from the hospital about Marilyn? Well, she's made a remarkable recovery. She's a tough old bird, but you're not going to get her in for an ID parade for a while. She's still bedridden. Let's hope to God our side picks out our Lord of the Flies. I don't want Morton walking out here again. Detective Superintendent Walker, please. Miss Maddox, I presume. I would be grateful if you did not smoke. <clears throat> you want me to put this out? I would appreciate it. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> you arrested my client on suspicion of the attempted murder of Marilyn Spark two days ago. You subsequently released him after 16 hours and then arrested him again, hours later, for the murder of Carol Lennox. Yep. I must say I'm surprised, even after you, you searched his premises, both work and home. Is that correct? Yep. And you found no evidence to implicate my client in either the murder or the abduction of Marilyn Spark? She was the reason he was first arrested, correct? Yeah. However, we did find a distinctive sweater at this house which matches perfectly the description of the clothing man as a sailor was wearing. Yes, but I believe my client has told you it's not his. It's with forensics. And you have his company vehicle, a white Sherpa van, being examined for evidence. Yep. But so far you have no results on either the sweater or the van. Not yet. However, an eyewitness to the murder of Carol Lennox has also identified a distinctive sweater worn by one of her attackers. It also matches the one found in Morton's house. But this eyewitness has not identified my client? No. Is there a problem with this eyewitness? My client tells me he was supposed to take part in an identity parade this afternoon. Cuff? Excuse me. I'll say it's just turned up a Kilburn. Yes. Miss Maddox, you wanted an ID parade for your client? Yes. Your wish has been granted. Thank you. Don't they make a lovely couple? The devil and bat woman. You're gonna love these. The slithers of wood found in both the victims' bodies match each other, and the DNA of the semen on both Harrow and Lennox is the same. We've got a match for Jimmy and both Bellini yes. brothers. Nothing for Morton. Shit.
it was uh, night, hard for me to uh, see clearly. You understand? Just take your time. Saeed couldn't pick him out. We can't hold off any longer, Pat. Let's charge the other three with Harrow and Lennox and get them to the magistrate's court in the morning. Damon Morton is in the clear. We're not going to charge them with Marilyn Spark. Yeah. Even though they've admitted it. I know they've admitted it. And Marilyn insists only one man attacked her. Damon Morton? Yeah. Antonio Bellini, Roberto Bellini, James Garrett. You stand accused of charges where bail cannot be considered. In the light of what I've heard, and in view of the seriousness of the offences, you will be remanded in custody until you appear at the Crown Court. Take them down. Darling, see you later. After I've shaked the arse off another woman, don't wait up. Don't know who he does it. Mm. Cheer up, love. At least you know where he is at night. But if you don't, we do. Surveillance have got nothing. Wife, work, screw 16 year old slag. Wife, work, screw 16 year old slag. Same thing week in, week out. Look at it. Don't sound like a bad old life to me. Never puts a bloody foot wrong, does he? You're gonna pull him off him? Nah, not much else we can do. While we're waiting for that poor woman to identify him. Well, I wouldn't count on it. That poor woman's still not looking good. Surveillance got anything? <laughs> 